I'm gonna go for free out of free for 20 quid. I mean, come on. Let the truth come out, okay. let him have his, his say. At the moment, he's just presumed guilty, right? I'm, his case is his case. He will deal with his case. Nothing to do with me, I'll do the show. Right? Well, now just stun shots, yeah. You know, you've got to, you've got to know the facts before you can go full full pelt in something. And uh, you, and when the when, like I said, when you know somebody, and it's hard to it's hard to go hard at them until you know that they've hundred percent done wrong. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here. The voice of hardcore boxing. Now, what can I say? Well, Eduardo's just put a tweet out uh, that my good friend at Dale the Great and then an X on end on Twitter's just sent me. Uh, for all you uh, people out there that want to be traffic police, I read that uh, text off Dale before I set off. How's about that? All you potential coppers out there who keep emailing me. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute, let me just stop. I don't want my milkshake to tip over. Spilt milk in Porky's cart is not good. Put that there. Right, onwards and upwards. Uh, Eddie Hearn's giving, well, Eddie Hearn's not giving actually. Sky are going to give dates, aren't they, to uh, MTK? I wouldn't put it past Eddie Hearn giving them some dates. And uh, I wouldn't put it past him giving them dates and still having some out at job kind of like going partners with them look it's not hard to uh, work out is it people get saying to me but how did you find that out because I put this out months ago right now I've done that many videos you'd have to go dig it out but I did call it and people have reminded me today but I'm not gonna bask in the glory of it because I don't get everything right but it's not hard to work out is it when you've got Matthew Macklin working at Sky and bigging up everything Sky and everything Matchroom and you've got Spencer Fearing who works at Sky and he's working for MTK as well isn't it? and Macklin, it's named after him isn't it? so, ain't got a problem with them guys but it's not hard to work out when you've got them two they're working there aren't they so they're not going to say anything bad about it so when you work with somebody you don't say anything bad about them do you? Now, unlike me, I am a den all the time, don't I? You've got to say it as it is. Now, this is how I look at it, right? This is the beginning of the end for Matchroom and Sky. I dare say, they're, they're going to go, whoa, my God, that was close. Get in your lane, Grandma. 
I dare say that Eddie, being the greedy sod that he is, and that also they're accountants, so they're going to like a plan B, aren't they? They will still work with Sky and hand out their dates, but they'll still want to be in control of the situation. So it's going to be interesting times ahead, or exciting times ahead, exciting times ahead. This is why we love this sport so much. Matthew, now this is how I look at it. They're going to get, I haven't even read it, but reading between lines, they'll give MTK some dates. They'll probably still get a cut of the fees that they get. For example, I mean, they don't check this as gospel, but they're on three million quid a year, aren't they, from Sky, just on the boxing. So that's 20 dates, 150 grand a date. That's how the structure works. I know how this works, because I know what dates we have with free sports, and I'm not gonna go into business with that because it's nobody else's business except Dennis's and free sports. But, Matchroom's different kettle of fish, innit? We're all paying subscriptions, aren't we? Look at this up my arse here. Audi up my arse here, two foot away. Come on, there you go, slow down, mate. Yes. Do you know who I am? A little Audi A4. I'll blow you away, mate. In this, it's remapped. I'll blow you. Blow you away, mate. I'll just blow you, mate. Don't worry about that. Anyway, so they're on three million a year, aren't they? Now, this is how I look at it. And you can read into this as much as you want. We're paying people are paying for Sky subscriptions so we're entitled to have a say aren't we with MTK coming on board now all the hard work that they've done over the last five years it's all paid off and I'm buzzing about it because it's new beginnings isn't it it's new beginnings and I think good they'll get their own people on you'll now see who are the company men and who aren't There'll be people getting dropped from the contracts at Sky. Uh, boxing people. I already know one person who ain't getting a new contract at Sky. I'm not, and it's not Spencer Fearon. So he says he's staying, isn't he? So. But people who want to come on my channel once they get finished at Sky, they want to air the grievances. I'm good. So they should. But I'd like to see Glenn McCrory get his job back on uh, Sky. And I think he's just mine. But with MTK, now working with Sky, and Tyson Fury's deal at an end, do you see it all falling into place? What was that? What was that? I can't hear that. Exactly. Silence is golden. Right? Golden. But, uh it's not hard is it if you if you're on top of your game like I'm on top of my game aren't I with boxing I'm not like other YouTube channels that wait for press releases or don't they don't do any work on their own nobody hardly tells me anything and what they do it's usually fake to make me look stupid I do my own I do my own digging I do my own assuming I get my crystal ball out I read between the lines and I look at what how they're gonna play it I surround myself by good people now, nobody told me anything about that, the, the MTK. I just worked it out ages ago because, look, if you watch, if, you, if, you, if you're on ball 24 hours a day, my sleep patterns are terrible because of boxing, but if you're on the ball 24 hours a day, what happens is you get to read between the lines. Now, they've tried to shut me up, haven't they, match room? Look, do you remember when I was porky? Look. Big Vern 44 on Twitter, 20,000 followers at one point. Now, see it again, that Audi. Being followed. I'm being followed. People, if I go home and say that, they'll say, oh, you've been on that stuff. Going up to Dennis's later, so then I'm being followed by an Audi. Oh, have you relapsed? 
So I'm not even going to mention it. I'm just going to blow him away. But look, when you put as many hours in as I do, you read between the lines. Right. Matchroom have not been delivering on promises. And the fans have voted with defeat. Joshua's numbers have been down. So when you're an accountant like Eddie Hearn, they don't like losing money. I remember him losing a fortune on a Darren Barker fight. He never did it again, did he? Darren Barker never headlined again in UK. Ah, 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 ah. No. What did he do? We went to America to fight Giel. We went to Germany to defend it. Mr. Home Advantage, Darren Barker, who sells loads of tickets. Went on his travels, didn't he? Had a life and death with Giel. I thought he got beat by two rounds myself. He got dropped. But uh, he managed to get the decision. Now, Germany, we know they patched him up, didn't they, with cellar tape. He went out there. He wasn't even doing road work before the fight. He just got his weight down, went out there, came out swingers like Rocky and Rocky Free in first fight with uh, Glover Lang and lost his belt. Now, other YouTubers can dig me out over that, so what? But this is how I look at it. I read between the lines. I don't say a source give me this info. Odd, odd people do, but a lot of it is they just want me to fire bullets, don't they, and upset people. You'd be amazed how many emails I get from people telling me stuff about Frank Warren. People used to send me emails a few years ago with Frank Warren's creditors. I'm not going to say who sent them, but I have a good idea. Here's a list of Frank Warren's creditors, Porky. Get that put out, will ya? Now, this is what happens. This is boxing. This is the dirty game, innit? It's a dirty business. But I think it's good news MTK coming on board. And hopefully, you know, they'll they'll start putting on all the, all, all the things that's good fighters. Now, they'll have to work with MTK, but when you've got Macklin in there working for Sky, and Macklin's mate owns MTK, there you go, it's all boys club, isn't it? So it's all good. It's got to be better than what Eddie's serving up, because he's going to Dazone, isn't he? But he won't give up the Sky dates, I can assure you of that. He won't give up the Sky dates at all, because he's got other sports that they do with Sky, and what they will want to do is, they will want to just keep keep the foot in as a plan B, because if it goes tits up with his own, they're going to have egg on the face. So what they'll try and do, they'll try and pal MTK up and blah de blah But if MTK do well, if they do well, right, with their shows at Sky, who's to say that MTK won't get the 20 days? Then they're dining at the top table, aren't they? Because at the moment, they're dining at the table, but they're not carving the meat, are they? Eddie's still carving meat with Mr. Bean, but we'll see, won't we? We'll see, but... My videos will still keep coming out, what I think. Alright, no videos are getting took down. So, people who are getting touched to me wanting videos took down. Ah, 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 ah! You have to kill me first. Send who you want to my house. Use whoever's names you want. The videos are still going to keep coming out. Alright? People can't put me on the payroll to stop my videos at all. That's just how I am. Oops. There you go. Early morning blues. So I'm just going to go up to the factory now. Bit of chest and triceps. Bit of back and biceps tomorrow. Shoulders and legs end at week. Not like doing shoulders. But then I'm gonna go up and see Dennis. Might even get an interview with Den today. Might even get an interview. If that's alright with some of you other YouTubers, is that alright? Is that okay? What a great show we're putting on next week. 20th of September, Josh Whale, Tommy Frank, Tyrone Nurse. Fantastic show. Free to air TV. Free to air, you can't beat a bit of free to air, can you chaps? Well that wasn't good, was it mate? Free to air TV. So we don't have to pay a subscription if you've got 
Well, tellies nowadays, every single teller that's made has free view on. So it's free to air. Free sports on free view. 20th of September, next Friday. Settle down after you've watched EastEnders to a nice bit of boxing. Get your Emmerdale, Coronation Street, EastEnders, order your Chinese, few beers. Get your popcorn ready. Don't get your popcorn ready, get your beak ready. And do the job properly. And then get sat up at window all night like that. Uh, uh, looking through blinds. Only joking. Oh, what do you know? Everybody's in today. Big pork is here. You know that. Right, peace out. Keep on trucking. I'm spitting all over the place here, aren't I? Like some old dosser. One good thing about Mercedes, they have a fantastic battery on them. I had a BMW coupe a few years ago, right? The smallest battery in the world like that, in boot. In boot? In boot? Once brought down middle of nowhere, I had this guy had a right performance turning his car around to give me junk leads. Pops bonnet up, fucking battery in boot. And he couldn't get round her to ring AA. So, oops, sorry. Green flag, not AA, but either way. Nightmare, so left bat left light on all night and it's uh and car still started up automatic as well. Unbelievable. If that had been a Mondeo or a Beamer, it'd have been flat. So peace out. Alright, shout out to South Yorkshire Packaging, Climate Court, Edlington Motors, Castle Conservatories of Doncaster. Ledger frames of Doncaster. If you want your windows done, then boys are the team to see. Ledger frames profile at the moment. Out of this world. Proper, proper top profile. She fancies me, huh? Telling you now. A man knows when somebody fancies them, doesn't he? She thinks she'll like my teeth. Broke like broken railings, aren't they? Had them all knocked out. Think you like bald men with ears bit off and teeth missing. Is that a good look? What do you reckon? So peace out, bump. Don't like to hurt you, yeah? I'm not keen on you. Tell you what, for a 72 year old cube, this is fantastic. This cube, thank you very much, Paul. You're a gentleman. <coughs> well, this is a continuation of uh, what we spoke about in morning, this morning in car. Uh, as you know, you've probably seen Eddie Earns' tweet regarding. Regarding working with MTK, I think we're matchroom on Sky. I think that's good. Obviously, I did. I did. I did say this few months ago. Everybody said I was crazy, but I told you so. You know, there's other things I told you about. Tyson Fury. He'll end up with matchroom. Anthony Yard will end up with matchroom. Daniel Dubois, he'll definitely end up with matchroom. They're all matchroom bound. Now, people say to me, how do you know this, who we've been speaking to? Yeah, I do get little bits of information off people, but I don't just put it out there. Some people do give me bullets to fire. I know who they are. I also know who the genuine ones are, who tell me things. Um, I generally read between the lines. I'm going to give you some tips now, right? 
I want to give you some tips. When you have fighters that are on opposing teams, what they do, they'll hammer the opposing team. It's when they stop hammering the opposing team that you have to start thinking, hmm. Now that's usually when they get down to one fight left on the deal. Or if they've had a defeat, because most contracts with most promotional agencies, including the one I work with, with Dennis Hobson, if you have a contract and you get B, a promotional contract, what happens is it's void. Now that contract could be a five fight deal. Could be five fights, eight grand a fight, or eight million a fight. You get beat, that contract's void. But they'll bring you back, but you won't be on the same money. That's the harsh reality of the boxing industry. When I first started seeing that, I was shocked because you could have kids on, I don't know, say, five grand, ten grand a fight, then they're gonna have to three, four grand. You're thinking, wow, and they've got to take harder fights just to get back in mix. That's what's fundamentally wrong with the boxing industry. And uh, I'd like to see all that change. And I can't do that by myself. And I think we need to change the mindset from everybody wanting to be a Floyd Mayweather 50 and 0. But really, he limped over the line, didn't he, to 50 and 0 because. You want a knockout artist, worry. We're knocking people out, but when it got up to world level, it stopped, didn't it? Now, masterful boxer, but you know, he, he picked his fights, didn't he? He never fought outside of Vegas. When did he ever fight outside of Vegas? Fought Gatti, didn't he? Fought Gatti, but in Atlantic City but he didn't fight that many times outside Vegas did he? His gloves, his ring choice, his referees, his judges, his state, his ring canvas, you know his dates, he always had the Cinco de Mayo date, he always had the other date in May, June, he always chose the date, the venue, everything Andre Ward tried to copy him, he more or less did, didn't he? Andre Ward was the only one in the Super 6 who fought at home. So, he was the only one who were allowed an interim fight in the middle of the tournament as well, wasn't he? But, that's another story. But I've just, I've just jotted a few things down and we're going to call this video Pork It A Week In Boxing or Porky's latest update. We'll call it Porky's latest update. Just a few things I've jotted down because I'm very busy today to be honest. Um, very, very busy but it is what it is, isn't it? Very busy today and I uh, don't really want to do anything today because I've got that much on. But I've turned the phone off. Somebody said to me, why don't you turn your phone off when you do it? So the phone's turned off. Uh, right, the IBO belt, this video could be a video on its own, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do one video, I'm not going to do loads of different videos because we've got a lot on which channel and we both do have, me and Nicola, my business partner, do have a life outside boxing, she runs a massive company called Climate Cool and uh, her and her husband and very very busy people and last thing they want is me ringing up saying oh you've not put this right on thumbnail or what time are you uploading this blah de blah it's I don't think she knew what she let herself in for when she was getting involved but so we're going to keep it to one video a day and there'll be that moment seven a week's enough I don't want to be putting out loads of videos like Hatman I don't want to copy Hatman doing five videos a day it's might as well just do one video a day and that's it. We're not view whores. Now the IBO belt. The IBO, what can I say about the IBO? I like Ed Levine. 
I've actually been in touch with Ed Levine. A lot of people know that I made the Frankie Gavin world title fight in Birmingham. I got Dennis to get Frankie on board, we arranged the meeting and it would have been a big thing for me that uh, because it was more or less the first time I'd been given permission to go do something on my own and uh, with two weeks to go my big moment we took on it, you know it all sort of collapsed and but it was very easy to work with the IBO and what I like about the IBO is I'm really tired today. What I like about the IBO is they don't have any mandatories. They just have a ranking system on points, and I think it's good. Uh, I think the fair people, very easy to work with. Uh, they're not as deep as other sanctioning bodies, and I do respect the belt. I mean, when you look at boxing, really, let's have a look at boxing. The WBC, we be crooks. We all know about the WBC, don't we? Hey, oh God. Hey, oh my God. So the WBC, we be crooks. The WBA, God. They've got three world champions in one weight class. How bad is that? Super, regular, and interim. Oh, four at heavyweight. They've got four world champions at heavyweight. Super, regular, interim and WBA gold. What the fucking hell is that? So I'm not going to go into it with the WBA, they're supposed to be trimming it, the champions down the belts, they're just adding more. When you've got Conor Ben at number seven ranked with the WBA, I don't know where he's ranked today, but when you've got Conor Ben ranked in the top, let's just say top ten, and then he's going and fighting guys that are that are shocking and he's swerving opportunities that he's been offered when you've got that I think that the WBA are just doing what they want everybody knows that it's probably the worst one out there the WBA is the worst then you've got the WBO <laughs> the WBO what can we say about them I'm not even going to go there we'll just leave that one we know what the WBO stands for, don't we? <laughs> Something boxing organisation, but it isn't world, is it? It's W and second letters A. Right. Anyway, the IBF, we know what happened with them years ago, don't we? They have to hand their books in every 12 months to the IRS and the FBI because of corruption I can tell you stories about the IBF that will make your eyes pop out but it will probably ruin a few relationships with people that I'm close to and I could probably end up with a backhander as well in the process so we can dig all them out can't we WBC, IBF, it's all online for you WBA, WBO so when I were given a while back a free run from Dennis said go on then see if you can do it you keep talking about it go on here's, here's your office here's, go on do it see if you can do it and come back to me when you've made something so I've got Frankie Gavin at welterweight we put it all together IBO welterweight title fight everybody knows what happened it collapsed so fair enough I never got my big moment did I and a few people had a good laugh about it I know that but it don't bother me. But I gave Steffi Bolt an uh, email right after it, IBF, IBO, didn't I? I gave him Ed Levine's email a while back, and they're working with him. And they've ended up with a girl from Doncaster, world champion Terry Harper, Anthony Tomlinson from Sheffield. He's going to be fighting for a version of the IBO belt. So I think that's good, and I think that. When people were going on about the IBO to me, people like Steffi Ball, oh, what are you going on about, Porky IBO? What? Traditional route, area, English, British, Commonwealth, you know, European, all that kind of route. I said, no, IBO. I'm an IBO man, I always have been, I always will be. The simple reason that you've got to start somewhere, aren't you now? The WBO, many years ago, was like the IBO is now. 
when Christopher you Eub when Nigel Ben won the middleweight, right, 1990. Were it 1990 or 89? I, for I forget now. It will. It, it lost it to Eubank in 90, so it might have been beginning of 1990, somewhere around about then. The IBO was not recognised by the British Boxing Board of Control. So Nigel Benn and Ambrose Mendy, they ripped their licence up, didn't they, after the fight. Now eventually they recognised it as a, as a world title, didn't they? But it took a long time for the media, you know, the, 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 the trade media, as we say, you know, KO Magazine, Boxing News, TKO Magazine, and the Big Daddy Ring Magazine. Because Ring Magazine is... is gets the most coolest, doesn't it? They do 35,000 sales a month. You know, if you're selling up to half a million magazines a year, you've got a good thing, haven't you? You know, you've got a generated income there of about, I don't know, two and a half million pounds just off at magazines, haven't you? Two and a half million dollars a year coming in. Then you've got all your online advertising. So the owner of that is Oscar De La Hoya and Bernard Hopkins, Shane Mosley. Now we all know that Bernard Hopkins, when he lost when he lost his Ring Magazine belt, he lost it to Joe Calzaghe. But he's had that belt a few times, and he well he will do only when he's a part owner of a Golden Boy Promotions, and they own the they own the magazine. So how can anybody who's a golden boy fighter feel that they've deserved that ring magazine belt? I mean, how many Canelo ring magazine belts has Canelo got? It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? But the way I see it is this. The IBO is better than all them others. It hasn't got as much coolness as it as the other four, but I think Ed Levine is a better person than all them other people who are in charge of them other belts, Sullivan at WBC Mendoza at the WBA and, and you know all them others, IBF, WBO they are not for me at all they're not for me at all no, they're not for me at all Lindsay Tucker has left the the IBF, so I met him, I've been out for dinner with him a couple of times in Bulgaria and in Leeds, in, Do in, Leeds in, in West Yorkshire, lovely guys from West Virginia, lovely guy but he's the only one there that's not been investigated for corruption. But well, I'm an IBO man, I just want everybody to know that, and I think that people should get behind the IBO. I just think they run a good operation, they're very fair. If a fight collapses, then they don't start screaming and ranting and raving, they play by the rules, and I can see them being big players down the line. And I can see all them people that I've spoke to about the IBO I'm not going to say the brain thieves, I'm going to say the smart people listening to me because all them other sanctioning belts are all basically governed by other promoters and I think if you want to make, make your way in the boxing industry you have to have a relationship with people like the IBO we have to get another belt going because all these others are controlled by the top people aren't they and the IBO people we don't, I don't control them and neither does Dennis but I dare say that Dennis has got a fantastic relationship with them mega and so have I and if you do business with them they're alright they are good people and I just think the IBO is a good belt and if you get an, if you get an IBO belt as far as I'm concerned you're a world champion I class that as a belt I know Ring Magazine don't class it as a belt, class it as a belt do they? But let me tell you this if Oscar De La Hoya fell out, if Oscar De La Hoya, right, if he fell out, 
with WBA or WBC, if he fell out with them and he ended up working with IBO, he would make putting the IBO in the ring magazine as the number five belt. But there's always been that mark. Smith didn't make the decision, so he's <laughs> There's always there's always been sorry, I don't Oscar De La Hoya would make that belt the fifth belt. There's always been a bit of com uh, confusion around the IBO belt. Is it the fifth belt or isn't it? Because when you think of the five belts, you think of them, don't you now? Is it because they don't have mandatories? Maybe it is because they don't have mandatories that they don't affiliate it because mandatories are there to be manipulated by promoters but if they don't have mandatories you can't manipulate people into them top positions like by having eliminators then final eliminators then yet another final eliminator it's like that film in it 48 hours then another 48 hours in it and then yet another 48 hours you know I mean? they have them everywhere Switzerland China Hong Kong New Jersey Boardwalk, Atlantic City, wherever they have these dudes, you should go and kiss ass. That's what you do and lobby for your fighters, but we all know how it's done, don't we? And it will always be like that. That's why I'd like to see boxing a governed sport. Now, that's just my opinion, I'm entitled to it. And the IBO are not like that. They're not like that, so, but the others are. People don't like what I'm saying, tough. I don't give a hoot. What are they gonna do, sack me? What, when I don't get paid anyway? Be your own man, be your own person, be real. Look what they did to Tyson Fury. Within seven days, he was stripped, wasn't he? If Vladimir would've won, would they've stripped him? No, they will not Tyson doesn't sell a ticket, does he? In the UK, he doesn't generate big money. Like Vladimir, do you know what I mean? In Germany, fighting in Germany. Joshua generates big money, they didn't strip him, did they? When he won belt, they did Tyson, didn't they? Hey, eh? Seven days later, stripped him. Tyson Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko as a mandatory. So why, why, was, the, why was there a rematch clause? There's no rematch clauses in mandatory fights. So... Whoever's fault that were, we don't know, do we? Could he have got the fight? Either way, I don't know. It was a WBO mandatory, wasn't it? So why were the IBF belt on the line with Vladimir then? And why did that belt... Why was the belt thrown into the pot when Joshua fought... No, it wasn't thrown... Oh, that's, this is another thing about governing bodies. Joshua had the IBF, didn't he? But when he fought Vladimir, they threw the IBO and the WBA into the pot. Why didn't Eddie Hearn get Luis Ortiz upgraded from interim champion to whatever, end up with that belt, but they didn't. That belt went into the pot for Joshua and Vladimir. So can you see where I'm coming from? So, can you trust any of them organisations? No. They've all got terrible marks against them over the years. Why is that? IBF, IBF, uh, IBF and the three W's. WBO, WBC, WBA. They've all got bad marks against them. But can anybody tell me a bad mark against the IBO? No. And this is why I think that people should get behind the IBO and give them some kudos. When I put this video up, I'm going to tag Ed Levine in. Not because I'm a kiss ass, because I like Ed Levine. I think he's a genuine person. If I want to tell him what I think, I can email him here. Do you know what I mean? But, uh I'll pump wind in a bit here, that's some but uh, I'm just about to do a Luferingo arm workout. What do you reckon? 
Give me something to do, won't it? Hey. Big porky on, big Lou Faringo arm workout. I've got it on flying there. Big Lou. Big Lou on patrol. <laughs> but yeah, the IBO is a good belt. And uh, I think that a lot of people, more people should get behind the IBO because, let's face it, right? Are the British Boxing Board of Control, are they doing a job? You know what that, you know what it's called, don't you? British Boxing Board of Control. Well, they're not controlling everything, are they? What's happening with Dillian White's B sample? What's happening with that? You tell me. What's happening with that? What we're happening with? I was going to say something about Robert Smith then, but I can't say it yet. I'm going to have to wait. I'm going to wait on the Robert Smith one, but I've got a corker on Robert Smith. I don't like him. I'm going to wait. I'm going to play. I've got a card to play with Robert Smith, and I'm going to wait. Now's not the time to play that one. But... Like I said, I hope everybody gets behind the IBO, uh, 23 minutes in. Right, Nigel Ben. Nigel Ben's son came out, said my dad's coming back, he put a tweet out, blah de blah. He's going to fight at light heavyweight and he is going to fight a former WBC champion. He didn't say it at what weight. So straight away I thought Carl Froch, Robin Reed, because Carl was speaking about coming back. Text Carl Froch. There you go. Carl Froch is not coming back. Robin Reed said he would fight him if the money's right. Now he didn't if you remember we did sign Robin Reed to Dennis Hobson promotions less than a year ago on a verbal agreement on video in Peter Fury's gym. Now, Robin Reed did say how much he'd, he'd be interested in. He did say a price how much he wants to fight Nigel Ben, and I'll speak to Dennis about it when I see him tomorrow. Now, so Nigel Ben, Robin Reed says he will fight you, so pick up the phone. But I don't personally think that uh, Nigel Ben's coming back at all. I think it's all wind and piss or pissing in the wind I think he just likes a bit of PR every now and then he likes people to talk about him he's a typical ex-former champion boxer every now and then they like their arseholes tickled don't they and that's just how it is but like I've just said to you there Robin Reed says he will fight Nigel Ben he's told me what he wants and so he's with us he will fight Nigel Ben so there you go should put this on a video on its own really but there's that many people out there they will they'll pass the message on I don't need to so pass that message on I'll tag Robin into this video as well and I will tag Nigel Ben into this video now I think it's a good fight but I don't want to see a 47 year old friend of mine fight a 50 how old is Nigel Ben? 55, 50, a 55 year old against a 47 year old. How crazy is that? Or is he 53? I don't know. Either way, he's over 50, isn't he, Nigel Ben? 54, 55, isn't he? Either way, who cares? I don't think he'll fight. But if he does want to fight, the offer's there, Nigel. Robin Reed will come and smash you up for right money. So. But if Nigel Ben's training, keep training. You keep saying you've got a few quid, a few properties, and you're set up for life. So what do you want to come back for? I'll tell you why Nigel Ben wants to come back, shall I? And nobody's going to tell him to his face because it's Nigel Ben, isn't it? He? He's a geezer. He's from Essex. And Nigel Ben has seen what money's about in boxing. And their eyes are popping out. And what it does, what you get with a lot of boxers, a lot of boxers are greedy that's it but they're putting their lives online so they deserve to be getting paid don't they well, like I've just said to you there Nigel Ben he loves the pound note well everybody from Essex loves the pound note the pound note crazy aren't they but 
like I said, it's a dangerous sport. And why would somebody with a family, somebody who's a granddad, want to... Is he a granddad? I think he is a granddad, or is it Eubank who was a granddad? Either way, why would a man in his 50s who retired 23 years ago plus... Now, if he fights, it's not going to be till next year because they'll have all the promotions, so you'd be looking at what? Getting on for a quarter of a century out of the ring. But then Nigel will tell himself, the other side of his brain, that... I'm stronger, faster, quicker than a speeding bullet. I used to smoke, take drugs, smoke weed, techies and party when I were an Essex boy. Knocking about with Essex boys. Which is fair enough. Will it do pay-per-view? Yeah. I'm back of boxing now. Anything goes, doesn't it? Anything. After this kick... After KSI versus Logan Paul, right? <laughs> Anything will go, won't it? Anything. You've got all these people. I mean, I heard a story the other day about... <laughs> I heard a story the other day. This is a true story about a certain... A certain YouTuber. Or two YouTubers, actually. Quite big. Who've been around you know, a while now. And... They were actually talking and having secretive meetings about wanting to be involved with all these like white collar things. How oh, we can do it as a white collar if we don't get a, if we don't get a license, we'll just do it as a white collar. Well, this is how I look at it, right? If you're getting ex world champions to fight, and even guys. Who, who have never even guys who have never had a fight in their life but they think that so and so and so and so will be a good fight and they want to put these on pay per view and they want to cash in on this boom that's taking off because in my opinion it's a dangerous presence to set on dangerous presence to set on now I personally think if Robin Reed were going to fight Nigel Ben they could maybe get away with it because they're ex-pros aren't they but some of these other people that are talking I don't know these white collar we'll do it as a white collar well what was that other one the other one what was the other one? Oh no what it Lee Frotch against Heavy D and Dilly Lee, no, Lee Frotch against Heavy D and Dillian White's brother, Dean White, or whatever he's called, again, because he's got about eight loads of aliases, and he? He's like Scarlet Pimpernel. Dean White, whatever, or whatever he's called, Dean Urkirk, or Lamar Scott, or Heavy D, Big D, or whatever. We'll just call him Plant Pot. Dean White, the plant pot. Sorry, Dean, I'm only joking. I'm giving you a bit of PR. Right. Dean White's a wrestler, in here. I've heard he's a wrestler and MMA star. Him against Shane Fury. Big sex... What's Shane Fury call himself? Big sexy Shane Fury. So you've got big sexy Shane Fury. Dean White... And then you've got Tyson Fury and Dillian White. They're going to sell it on their Twitter and social media accounts to build it up so that the others can get paid and everybody behind it all egging them on. Is this where boxing is now going? Well, the world's biggest promoter Eduardo Hearn, he's putting on KSI Logan Paul too. And Adam Smith's saying he wants to see it because his daughter, who's eight, and his son, who's 12, they like KSI. So Adam Smith's kids like him on YouTube, so we've got to watch it. 
So does this mean all Sky subscribers have to put up with shit like this? Because it is hashtag shit. Nigel Benn against Robin Reed. Yeah, I could stomach that. Six rounder, they'd be blowing out their asses, wouldn't they? After that, I could stomach that. Robin Reed would take him apart though, wouldn't he, Nigel Benn? He's not fought in a long time. Uh, Robin was still fighting uh, 16 years after Nigel finished, so. Nigel were finished in 96, wasn't he? So why would he be coming back? Why would you come back after that? Yeah, he, he had nothing left after Malinga did him. He had no left after that Malinga fight. He threw everything into that last round and dropped Malinga. And then Collins knocked him about for two fights. So and he quit in both of them, didn't he? Well one of them he did his ankle, then he quit in one after. He had three retirements on trot, so he kept going back to to well for one more pay, you know like another forty eight hours, yet another and yet another. He did that three times on trot and now he's coming back again. I don't get it. Don't do it, Nigel. You'll spoil your legacy. Robin Reed, you're still 47. That's still young, isn't it? For a boxer nowadays, if he's looked after himself. Robin Reed walks about at 12 stone. He could do him in a way. Last time I seen Robin, he was 167 pounds. And that's what he fought at. He doesn't carry no weight. Uh, he naturally... Natural athlete, uh, he'd be too much for Nigel Ben. Nigel Ben hasn't even got a jab. He's got a massive right hand though, like his son. But they, they, they do not know how to jab, do they? So I don't know. One of them will want to tear up. Robin would be the counter puncher. Ben be stalking him. Robin and counter punch him. And Robin Reed can whack. Ask Carl Froch. So I don't know, but the other names that I've been looking at are Steve Collins and Glenn Catley. They're WBC champions. Who would want to see Glenn Catley fight? Nobody. Steve Collins, yes, but he's not a WBC champion. He was WBO. So it can't be him unless Conor Ben's lying and they're doing it to draw you in. I don't know. The best fight out of that lot would be Steve Collins against Ben. For a simple reason, they're a similar age. Uh, if Robin Reed comes back, they'd have to make it worth his while because Robin's got a son now. So it is what it is, isn't it? But... This is how I look at it, right? I don't really want to see it, but if it happens, I'd like to see Robin get a few quid out of the job. But I don't really want to see it at all. I don't want to see it. They could get away. They could pull it off. But we're now entering a dangerous... We're now setting a dangerous presence with boxing, whereas everybody and the dad wants to be a boxing promoter or put shows on. We all know about Spencer Oliver, he's the one that pushed the KSI thing, Logan Paul, and he's the one that's been driving it with Sky and Eddie Hearn. Spencer Oliver, he ended up with a big fat check after the first fight, and he's got himself involved in the second one, so good on Spencer Oliver. You know, he's one at Chaps, he likes a bit of a party, so good luck to him. But it is what it is, isn't it, but... I don't really want to see it all, but if it does happen, like I've just said, I'd like to see Robin come back and uh, get a few quid. I'd like to see Clinton Woods come back as well, because he's flat on all them. But, what can you do? Clinton's still in good nick, but he won't come back, Clinton. He's got a few quid, and he doesn't live an extravagant lifestyle like that Essex lot. Now, on to the rest of the, rest of the news. Uh, Derek Chisora. Let's have a look what we're on here. Six minutes, we've got 24 minutes. Derek Chisora. What can we say about Derek Chisora that hasn't already been said? I'm Team Derek at the moment, me, Team Derek. But let's have it right. Taylor against Progre. It's a unification fight between the number one and the number two in the in that division they both got world titles on the line and it's for Ali Trophy as well it's a a fight that people like me get horny over get horny get horny I get horny over fights like this it's a proper hardcore wet dream in it but I can see Derek Chisora's point but 
Derek Chisora against Parker. It, it's not for a world title, is it? And they're not both of them are not born in England. But yet the other two weren't born in England, were they? But at least they're for world titles, isn't it? So just give Derek a few more quid, Eddie. Fifty grand should do it. He likes a few quid, uh, Derek. He likes a bun. Give it a minute in an Asda bag, Eddie. Or, or knowing you were Marks and Spencer's bag. Give him it in a, in a Marks and Spencer's bag. And that should uh, nip it. You know, that should sort it out. Give Davy Day 10 grand as well in an Aldi bag. And because it'll be Davy Day behind this, he will be pushing Chisora to do that. I saw David Hay on here going on about, well, you know, we're talking to BT Sport and all that. Then I heard Derek going on about it. Look, if they're trying to play. Eddie Hearn, they will come on stuck because Eddie is an ice man. He is an ice man. Ice, ice baby. He's like Usek. If you don't believe me, go and ask Tony Bellew. Alright? Eddie Hearn's an ice man and he won't be bullied by anybody. Alright? Derek Chisora has got nine losses. Nine losses. Shot to bits. Shot to bits, Parker will punch him upside down. Shot to pieces. He can't fight movers, Parker will just destroy him. Batter him, make a mess of him, smash him to bits. Derek wants you to stand in front of him like Dillian White and have a tear up. Parker won't be there to be hit, he's not there to be hit. He'll pick and poke and make a mess of him. He'll not, he's not there to be hit. Derek won't be able to dance with him for 12 rounds. We saw what happens with that style with Derek Chisora in Monaco. Couldn't cope with it, could he, against Caballel? A young kid like Caballel doing that to Derek. Yeah, Derek's uh, the right. I mean, I saw that interview with Gareth, Gareth A. A. Davis. Gareth A. Davis had his tongue that far up Derek's arsehole. I thought they were going to have to amputate his head from Derek's arse. It was that bad. So I don't know, but I'm glad to hear that Derek's left uh, Caldwell up here. I'm glad to hear that. I think that's a good move for him because he didn't really look that good, did he? Uh, fighting under Caldwell banner. But it is what it is, isn't it? So, but let's have a look at Derek Chisora's record, shall we? He's lost against Dillian White twice. He's lost against Elenius, Caballel and Pulef. David Hayes knocked him out, Vitaly's beat him, and Fury's beat him twice. After Parker beats Derek Chisora, that's 10 losses. After Parker does him, where does he go from there? He's got to get a gatekeeper to get to a gatekeeper, to get to another gatekeeper, so it'll be, I don't know, David Price, and then he'd probably have to go... Caballel or Summer or Pulef, he'd have to take a risky fight, wouldn't he, to get back in the mix? Yes, he beat Takam, that's his best win, but what level is he? I mean, Derek's saying he's world level, and so is David Hay. Show me some statistics and some facts that suggest that Derek Chisora is world level. A bit like people keep saying to me, Tyson Fury is elite, Tyson Fury is elite. Tyson Fury is the best ever world heavyweight champion out there at the moment. Well, let me tell you this. If Tyson Fury is the best, it says a lot about the division, doesn't it? Because Tyson Fury has only won one world title fight in his life. One. That was four years ago against Vladimir Klitschko in his 68th fight after a 10-year reign at the top. And he were age in his 40th year so that's Tyson's best win and only world title win that's it now if he's the best what does it say about the division it means it's shot to pieces doesn't it the division well let me tell you about world level Derek Chisora right who's Derek Chisora's best win what is he famous for he's famous for losses isn't he can you tell me his best win tack him. Takam Spilker, that's it. Malik Scott, he knocked all them out. Danny Williams, he fought Danny Williams in his 13th fight, Derek Chisora, for a British title. Danny were 48 and 1 at the time. 
That was a long time ago, wasn't it? So, really, when you think about it, Malik Scott, Spilker, Tackerman, Danny Williams, that's it. What level are all them guys there? Danny Williams, he in his 50th fight, what level were he at? So that were a British title fight, so we'll give Derek the British. Let's see if we can get Derek to European level. Tackham, Spilker, Malik Scott. You'd squeeze him on Euro level on that alone, wouldn't you? But the European champion at the moment is Caballel. I think he might have just vacated though, but Caballel's had that belt for a while now, has he had four fights with it? So if Caballel's, the, we're not talking about past when Derek was a European champion, we're talking about now, the level now. So if Caballel's that level now, and he's already beat Derek and Caballel's Euro level, what levels that make Derek? It makes Derek back down to British level, doesn't it? So who's the British champion at the moment? Well, who? Daniel Dubois. He's British champion at the moment, isn't he? Would Daniel Dubois beat Derek Chisora? Oh, come on. He'd turn him apart, wouldn't he? It'd be like a pit bull grabbing a poodle, wouldn't it? be a bloodbath, wouldn't it? It'd be a bloodbath. It'd be a bloodbath. So, what level is Derek at? Derek's winging it, isn't it? They've got David A, his mouthpiece. He's going to say he's world level. We want, we want this and blah de blah. But the reality is, he's a shot fighter who's now screaming, ranting and raving, saying he wants more money or he's not going to fight. Well, I'll, I'll, let me tell you a little story. If he said that to Dennis Hobson, do you know what Dennis would say? Two words to him, don't box. And he won't box. So you can't, listen. This is how I look at it, right? Derek's trying to get as much money as he can out of this fight because he knows that the big money's around the corner he also knows he could take some damage in the fight and might not fight again. So I can understand that. I can understand that. But as far as I'm concerned, Derek Chisora, he's not British level because he loses to Dubois. He's not European level because he's lost to Caballel, who's that level. So I don't know what level he is. Let's, let's say he's a contender for a European belt. You could give him a European title shot, but he won't win it, would he? So don't tell me his world level, David A. Hey, and Gareth A. Davis, go and get your tongue amputated. Or get your tongue looked at by a doctor after what I've just seen the other day. You should be embarrassed. You are the new Mr. Bean, Gareth A. Davis. But, like I said, Derek, uh, Derek Chisora, no, he's not world level at all, but he's a character and he knows how to sell a fight. But that other day, just scripted to bullshit. They couldn't throw any tables, could they? Do you know why? Because they've thrown all, they've done all that, haven't they? They can't roll around on the floor, because they've done all that. All they can do is swear now, that's what it's, it's come down to, isn't it? Derek Chisora at a few matchroom pressers, doing a bit of swearing. That's it. That is it. That's what, we're, that's what, we've, been, that's what we've got now. Chisora swearing, Adam Smith, Caller, and Eddie Hearn. All that top they were laughing. They were laughing like spitting image puppets, weren't they? <laughs> like Beavis and Butthead. <laughs> like that. Like little gimps from Gimpville Island. Do you know what I mean? Unbelievable. But uh, Danny Williams were 41 and 8 when he fought Chisora. Shot to bits. No wonder Frank Warren made the fight. I mean, he was, he'd gone 10 and 5 since he beat Mike Tyson, 10 and 5, so that means to me he's on slide, 5 losses out of 15 fights after Mike Tyson fight, so, it is what it is, isn't it, I mean, who's, who's Dillian White, Robert Elenius and Pulef, Caballel beat, I mean, David A. I. Chisora not long ago, and Bell, you'll beat him. Caballel, like I said, beat Chisora. Dillian White, 
beat Elenius and he's beat Chisora twice. So, and Dillian's not fought for a European title yet. David, Derek Chisora has got a better resume than Dillian White, even though he lost to him because he's won British and Commonwealth and European, and it's Chisora. Dillian's only got a British to his name, like Dubois. And Dillian's, what is he, 10 year older than Dubois? And a nine year old and looking at drug charges. So let's hope he gets off with these drug charges. But, I don't know. What, we're three months now into Dillian's ban if he gets a ban? We're three months already down the line. Nobody keeps mentioning the B sample, do they? Keep mentioning this B sample. Feel sorry for Dillian's team if he's guilty and if he's not, if they're not earning him, but it is what it is, isn't it? I'm boxing through and through. I can't defend anything like that. If he's guilty, you got to face the punishment. In life, in England, when you do anything wrong, they will take your pound of flesh, whether it's parking down the street on a double yellow or doing 60 in a 40 like me over a day. I've got a sweat now on this ticket. I don't think I was driving. I think it was Hamish McDougall because I think they've got a photo front back. I think Hamish were driving. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? I'm only joking. I'm only messing with you. Now, Derek's a self-promoter, I've mentioned that, but we all know what happens, don't we? Joseph Parker beats him up on points, and his corner, whoever's going to train him, pulls him out. Now, if he's got any sense, he'll go back on his hands and knees to John Charles, because... Don Charles deserves to get paid off this. He deserves to get... Yep, Don Charles deserves to get paid. So I'd like to see Don Charles training Derek Chisora again. I'd like to see... A, I like happy endings, me. And I think the fact that... The fact that Don Charles... Has... Uh, I think the fact that Don Charles has not... He's not having anything to do with Chisora at the moment. I think it's quite sad. So Derek, get back to Don Charles and apologise to Don. That's what you need to do. You need to go back to Don and start again. Uh, sporting Icons. Sporting Icons did a video about Dennis Hobson's boxing show. Uh, and he said uh, he thinks that I should do a reply to it. Pretty simple really, isn't it? Uh, yeah, you call it hashtag glass houses. Right, this is what I'm going to say to it. We haven't got the budget that Matchroom have got. Matchroom are getting three million quid a year, right? Three million pound a year for 20 shows. So they get 150,000 pound per show. That's it, what do we get per show? zero we have to pay to go on free sports tv so we're behind the ball already we're at the other end of the spectrum aren't we so that's why we can't put on as good a fights as matchroom there you go so josh whale is in a tick over fight because it's his second fight as a featherweight tyrone nurse is coming off a few losses he's just had one win on his comeback and Tommy Frank has had 11 fights. Now, 11 fights is still a novice, isn't he? Last I heard. I mean, how many rounds has Tommy done? He's not done that many rounds. He's only a kid. He's not as advanced as Sonny Edwards yet. So that fight will happen, but not yet. So I don't know why you felt the need to go and dig our show out. And you kept chipping away. But a lot of your videos are matchroom based, aren't they? So, I don't see you mentioning anything about grassroots boxing. I don't see you going to any small old shows, doing any filming. I don't see you going to amateur shows. I just see you putting things out that Dillian White's innocent and hammering Wilder or Fury and blah de blah. But, good luck with your channel. It's You've got 50,000 subscribers, so you must be doing something right. You must be doing something right. You're doing it better than me, aren't you? So, good luck to you, but... It is what it is, but thank you for your direct messages and I will look forward to you answering a load of questions from all the Porky followers and the people that have emailed me. We will keep it clean. There will be no questions with people saying that you're this, you're that, you're blah, 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 and that you're a matchroom. 
uh, group here or anything like that. There'll be none of that, but I will address the comments that you mentioned in there. Uh, I'll address them now, in fact, actually. I've never begged Eddie Earn for any tickets in my life. I have had two lots of tickets off Eddie Earn. One of them I paid for was the Groves... Groves Frotch. I paid £200 to Eddie and he refused the money. He refused it twice. The third time I said, no, I only want to spend 200 quid, Eddie. I gave him the £200. That was at the Senchenko Kelbrook Presser while I was stood talking to Dave Colwell and Richard Poxon. I gave him the 200 and Kelbrook's dad, and Kelbrook. I gave him the 200 quid and he said, no problem. There's some tickets here for your birthday tonight, Porky, because I broke my leg and it was my birthday, so them tickets were fantastic. Kelbrook Senchenko, they were free, so I had them for free, but I didn't beg for them. Uh, that's basically it, really, and the Frotch Groves ones, they upgraded me on the uh, channel. I think he's a good, uh, a good guy. What was the other thing somebody else were on? Oh, Yui Fury, Peter Fury. My friendship with Peter Fury, that's not to do with anybody else. If I have to dig Yui Fury out, I will dig Yui Fury out, but he doesn't need digging out, does he? What has Yui Fury done? Yui Fury is 24 year old, he's been in with Povetkin, Parker and Pulev. Dillian White didn't want to fight uh, Pulev. Or Povetkin, did he? From what I've heard. So who else wanted to fight Povetkin? Only Dave Allen, but... Dave Allen's just doing it for money, isn't he? He would have gone there, took his licks and got pulled out after a few rounds, wouldn't he? He would just keep plodding forward, taking punches, like against Ortez. Do we want to see Dave Allen's brain scramble on the floor? Because I don't want to see that. I want to see him get on in life and get a few quid out of the job, but... Here's what it is, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? Nobody takes it serious, but you get all these little gimps from Gimpville Island who cause trouble. Oh, that was it. The other thing was... Trolls. Somebody, did you say that I'd said something about your disabled son and called him a windy licker? Well, I haven't said that. But don't you, th if anybody says anything on Porky's Corner YouTube, if we comment on anything, and we've only ever commented a few times, it comes up in grey with a grey background if we comment on YouTube. If that says anything, and it's detrimental to anybody, let me know, or anything on Twitter, let me know. Anything like that, come and tell me, all right? Come and tell me. But if anybody sets an account up called Porky Russ or Porky, it doesn't mean to say that it's me, does it? All right, or somebody set a, an account upon here the other day, Jim MacDonald, <laughs> and he's quite funny now. I don't know who that is, but is that Jim McDonald from Coronation Street? No, I don't think it is. The other person, who's the other person? Dennis Hobson Promotions. Now, the day after I signed Josh Whale, because it was me that signed Josh Whale, I were given permission to go out and find some new talent, and I couldn't find any. So I sat there in office, we'll put Dennis's, and I thought, Josh Whale. Josh Whale. We'll get Josh Whale, he's just had a defeat. His second defeat with Steffi Bull on trot. Thought, we'll have Josh Whale. I went and got Josh Whale signed. And that's it. But, uh, <laughs> It don't mean to... And then, then the account came out. Dennis Hobson Promotions on YouTube. And then they was having little digs and that. And Does that mean to say that it's Dennis Hobson? No, it don't. Because Dennis doesn't have a YouTube account. So... The Dennis Hobson Promotions account is not Dennis Hobson. Anybody that says they're Porky Russ on there isn't me. There's one on there. Is it Porky Russ's missing teeth? Porky's missing teeth. Does that mean that it's me? No, it doesn't. And sporting icons, I think you know that, don't you? So I don't know who said something about your six-year-old disabled son. I don't know. And I don't think that's very nice at all. I have twins. My twins are seven in November. My little boy is 10, is since January, he's been assessed for autism. So we're up to September now, so I'm hardly going to go around saying things like that, am I? All right, and if you speak to Rico, who's at Leadwright or at Highfield Boxing, Terry, 
or Denny Sobson or Michelle Taylor or anybody around me in boxing they'll tell you about my little boy so I'm hoping he's going to be alright he's got another 15 months to go on his assessment so no I haven't said anything about his son but whoever has is a scumbag and you should report them to the authorities the Twitter or YouTube or whoever and get them banned so I'm sorry to hear about that but no I haven't done that but you know that's social media for you isn't it but it is what it is isn't it I've made mistakes in, on social media in the past because boxing does that to us but I think I'm man enough to apologise when I have so I think I had Danny Connor I think I said something about cancer or something over, over about a year ago 18 months ago caused me a lot of uh, messing about but sometimes we say things in the heat at the moment don't we and we don't think but uh, I've never said anything about children or anything like that so and I think that's you you addressed sporting icons but I look forward to you on the 23rd uh, Super League in boxing Will boxing for belts mean anything in years to come? Uh, yeah, I don't think belts really mean anything at the moment, to be honest. Fury don't need a belt, he's earning big, innit? It? It's how you promote yourself now. Chisora ain't got a belt, he might be in a pay per view. So, it is what it is, isn't it? I've got an appointment at 3 o'clock, I've got a lady coming in. I've got a lady coming to see me to drop some paperwork off for this place. So, and if she's nice to get on with, she might be polite. And if she'll make me a cup of not what I'd want all day. So I think that's about it, really. Uh, so, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Uh, a lot of what people say in boxing and do, people shouldn't take... What's the word? People shouldn't take to heart. That's what I said. They shouldn't take it to heart, but... Nobody is perfect, are we? None of us are perfect. We're all striving to get better things, aren't we? Uh, oh, another thing that Sporting Icon leads to. What was the other thing? That Dennis Hobson shouldn't have me, shouldn't have me around me. I'm an idiot and blah de blah and blah de blah. Well, ah, uh, Dennis Hobson. Oh, sorry. Lower casing. Dennis Hobson at Hotmail. Dot com. Email Dennis and tell him that. I think we've had this before. Of Tony Bellew, did he ring up? Tony Bellew, Danny Connor, oh, what other one? Steffi Ball. Four and a half year later. Four and a half year later. I'm still with Dennis. So bigger people than you have tried to get rid of me and I ain't going. I'm not going nowhere, am I? Dennis is loyal, isn't he? He's my pal, isn't he? He's loyal. You look after your pals, don't you? Now, yeah, I do fuck up every now and then, but why why, why would Dennis get rid of me? Because you're saying so. I don't know. You run a YouTube channel just like me. You don't work for Eddie Hearn, do you? You don't work in the boxing industry. You don't know what I do behind the scenes in the boxing industry, so... But feel free to contact Dennis Hobson and tell Dennis to sack me. In fact, Dennis, if you're watching this, and I know you will be, probably on a train journey or on a, on an, on a tablet on an aeroplane or in your hotel at Jersey. Dennis, sack me. Sporting Icon says you've got to sack me. Sack me down and put me out of my fucking misery. <laughs> so that's about it, really. I think that's Sporting Icon's address. It's all a bit of banter, isn't it? But now that I've addressed that, we don't need to speak about it on the channel. Right, that should be my three o'clock appointment. Hello, we're still speaking. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's okay, no worry. I'll come outside and wait for There's a load of cars outside, there's a... There's a silver Rolls Royce and there's a load of black as uh, black cars. There's a black X5. There's about eight of them. If you pull up outside, you'll see them all on the corner. Unit A. Right, thank you. All right, bye bye. Mm, that should be it. Fucking Rolls Royce ain't mine. It's next to us. Well, that's about it, so, so peace out.
keep on trucking keep supporting boxing it is a fantastic fantastic sport and shout out to Spencer Fearon as well uh, I've given Spencer some stick about last few months but I actually know some at work that he's been doing going abroad and he's been to third world countries and that with MTK and do you know what you've got to respect that because a lot of them people in them countries they don't really well they don't get uh, they don't get as much what's the word they don't get what they haven't got lives like we've got have this so you've got to give him respect uh, and I hear he does Christmas turkeys and all that in England and all that well we used to do that so but that's still good as well isn't it that's good but uh, it's it's good if you can give him back so well done Spencer for you it I do give you some stick because you are a company man Spencer aren't you at times but anybody that gives the time up to do things like that that's fantastic that I don't doubt Spencer got paid for going there because he's working for MTK but he's done well if he's done that and that's good positive stuff in it I like good things like that and like I said I'm trying to get a bit of positivity in my own life because I am what's the word very dysfunctional I used to be I'm trying to get a bit of stability with this channel and working with them well it is what it is isn't it but like I said it's a what a dog business boxing isn't it it's a dog 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 business but when it's done great it's fantastic and like I said if Josh Whale wins a belt with Dennis Thompson I'll be the first one in that ring and get in there and then all them people that said ah oh, well Josh Whale's shot to bits and all that well they'll all be proved wrong won't they and sometimes that can be the all motivation that you need to succeed in the boxing industry so peace out keep on trucking shout out to South Yorkshire Packaging at Rotherham soon to be Barnsley uh, shout out to Climate Cool in Doncaster Castle Conservatories at Balbit, Ledger Frames at Cunningsborough. All right, thank you very much for your continued support. And shout out to all them people that I usually text every day. I'm not going to mention your names, but you know who you are on WhatsApp. All them that have got me no number. If you ain't got it, you ain't getting it. All right, peace out. I don't know if anybody noticed that shot, but it's called reverse side. I'm going to demonstrate a reverse side shot to you. Right. Yeah.